Okay, speaking of, about modules and relays and all kinds of PCMs and uh, body control modules, if you look at this, right, instrument panel cluster over here, the radio, you see all these connectors. Obviously, all these connectors go to, they go to modules and fans, and as you can see, a vacuum mod uh, a module, as you can see over here, a switch, speed control, ignition switch. So there are many, many, uh, uh, the, it's called the harness. Many, many, many connections. Where do they go? Look where the harness goes. From here, uh, from the fuse panel actually, it divides. It could go here to the PCM. It goes through the, through the roof actually, the ceiling, goes under the seats, goes all the way to the trunk for the lights for the fuel pump quite a, a, a quite a good amount of wiring take this into consideration because in the future we're going to go into fiber optic for fiber optic you could put in one uh, a cluster or one wire you could put 12 14 wires whatever you want it's a one a uh, 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 wire, so to, so to say, which will be the speed of light, obviously, light optics. And you will have speeder, much more quicker responses of modules. And why? Because more accessories, more electronics. We need higher speed. That's what the demand of the customer is. We want more electronics. We gotta knock this out. The hard this is called hard wiring. We're gonna put in fiber optic. Along with that, like I said before, we usually have 12 volts. We went from six volts to 12 volts, probably gonna go to 24 volts. So more voltage obviously, more fiber optics. And we have them some cars also in the in the lights, you have fiber optics um, for, for that. And so like I said before. When you look for, let's say, a body control module or any module, remember, it might be here in this area. Usually it is over here where the instrument cluster is, the dashboard over here. The PCM, the body, the power control module usually is here or here or here on under the hood. The other ones, as you can see is here, these are pictures of modules. These might be under the dashboard or inward of it or here a module. So they could be in this territory also. Remember also over here, there's a fuse panel over here also on the side. Not just over here, a fuse panel. Here and here. The main fuses are here. The secondary, I call it the primary fuses are here. The secondary fuses are here. Once you open the door, you'll see it. You'll have to probably lift off the fuse cover, the panel for it. So like you see, the wiring is going also to the wheels. Why? Speed sensors, wheel speed sensors. There are speed sensors all over. So I just wanted to give you a very quick analysis of that. Now, discussing what we, what we discussed one time before, we were talking about inputs and outputs. And how do I know what's an input, what's an output? I already made a, a couple of videos on this. So I don't want to repeat, keep on repeating the same uh, the same concept, the same idea. In this textbook, which is a different textbook, also which I learned from uh, in school, in the same concept, you have sensors coming in. If sensors are coming in, what does that mean? That means they are inputs. Anything on this side is an input. How does the signal go? Does it go this way or this way? The signal goes this way. The arrow faces this way. Does it go out? signal goes this way from this what can you detect when you see a b plus over here like we had in the previous textbook these are outputs first thing that should come to your mind first thing that comes to your mind I, ha I have an output if i have an output what does that mean that means i have an input if i have no output does that necessarily mean i have no input not necessarily I could have inputs, but the problem might be in here. From this, you can derive. Also, this is B+. Plus. This is 12 volts. This is the same 12 volts. This is giving what? A ground. Whenever you see 12 volts on one side, even though it doesn't say 12 volts, B plus is equal to 12 volts. Therefore, this is giving a ground. What is? 
this computer module. This is giving this a ground or turning this on. So as a result of the inputs, this will control something, fuel injectors, fuel pumps, starter motor relay, uh, anything. So therefore, like we said before, nothing has changed. You think that the, that the, uh, uh, that the processor or the, the, the computer module is not working. Nothing has changed. It, it doesn't matter if it's Asian car. It doesn't, mean, it doesn't matter if it's European, American, domestic, whatever. What's your first shot that you go for? Always go for this one the first. Make sure you have B plus coming over here. If there's a fuse, obviously, if the fuse is, fl is blown, we have a problem, right? When we have a problem, if this is a fuse, let's make it a little more. Here's the fuse. This is 12 volts. Here's the fuse. Here's, we'll call this F1. We'll call this 12. You come on this side, you, you put your multimeter, 12 volts here. Over here, you get zero volts. And this is going to the processor inside that we talked about in the other one. You're going to put another fuse in there? No. What are you going to do? You're going to take the multimeter, find this point, and find this point. The ground of the multimeter is going to go to ground. The black one of the multimeter, I'll show you when we do this hands-on. The, the black of the multimeter, the negative will go to ground, somewhere ground. And the other side of the multimeter, which is the positive, the red one, will go after the fuse. So let's put it, make it a little more clearer. Here is the multimeter, voltmeter. The positive one goes here. Voltmeter, voltmeter, negative goes here. What am I doing when I'm doing this? What I'm doing is, I just found a blown fuse. I want to make sure there's no short after the fuse from here to here through this module. I'm going to put this on ohms, like you'll see. I'm going to measure, make sure I don't have a short to ground. Why? Because the fuse was blown. That's not good. That's the first thing you do before putting back a fuse. 100% of all the mechanics will put back another fuse, a new fuse. That's not the correct way to do it. Then you're going to blow the second fuse. Oh, I know. So you're going to say to yourself, I have a short. Here's the voltmeter. Why not take the voltmeter that you just measured 12 volts with, flip the selector, and put on ohms? How easy is that? You, you don't even have to change the connections. Why? 12 volts here, 0 volts here. What was my selector on volts? My probe, my positive probe is still here. Take the selector and put it to ohms. And that's it. You leave, you leave the same probes connected here, connected here. That's it. So why not do that instead of putting another fuse, which I never understood. So hopefully you understand that. Now, we spoke about another thing. Here's the battery goes through a closed switch the switch has to be closed goes through here goes through the bulb this is called the load let's make it a little different now we have two loads just because i put two loads how much should the voltage be across each one still 12 volts as you see over here let's say i take another one this is series and this is parallel let's take another one let's take two more bulbs across each other how much should the voltage be across this one? Still 12 volts. It does not change. This is the same point as this. This is the same point as this, which is the same point as that. Does not change. Okay? So anyway, and I found this chart about symbols. If you have any problem with schematic symbols, please take a, a, a picture of this or pause, whatever you have to do to understand it. I went over it numerous times in the videos so please go to my channel joe the schematics for auto and we went over this one one time we went over this one the schematic and it should be it should if you understand this you understand this you should understand this so anyway go to my other channel where you see my uh some uh, videos about how to how to measure the alternator with a clamp meter i'll put how to measure the relay inside the circuit like i said not taking it out so hopefully when you see this again whenever you have a problem with the pcm a bcm a tcm what do you shoot for first he's your first culprit to go for and make sure always you have a good ground like i'll show you 
uh, hands-on so you'll understand it much better. Thanks for watching.